Uh, let's look at this. Uh, classic 1980s sitcom Heidi High has been slapped with a new trigger warning. The show, which starred Sue Pollard, Ruth Maddock and others, followed the ups and downs of workers at a holiday camp. Now available on the streaming platform BritBox, the programme will begin with a warning message of language and attitudes of the era that may offend. Uh, there's a host of other sitcoms that have also... <laughs> this is just extraordinary. host of other sitcoms that have been slapped with trigger warnings as well, including One Foot in the Grave... Who was offended by one foot in the grave? Who? I don't believe it. Faulty Towers? Come on. Come on. I mean, Faulty Towers does have... Yeah, it, there is, I think, the major says a few naughty words. But, I mean, the overarching take from Faulty Towers is that it's just a in incredibly, brilliantly written, funny situation comedy. Uh, hello, hello is on there as well. Which I... Is there some kind of... I don't know. A lot of English actors playing French and foreign people doing kind of accents. Is that it? The Good Life. Now, The Good Life, OK. As a kid, I would never have entertained The Good Life because I would have thought, mm, it's, you know, it's a bit... I think my mum had it on. It's a bit boring, really, you know. A couple of people living in, you know, very nice house in what looked like south-west London, uh, who'd given up work to live off the fat of their own back garden. But actually, only later, when I started to watch it, I realised how brilliant every one of those four performances were. But Felicity Kendall, Penelope Keith, Paul Eddington and Richard Bryars. And I think only two of those survived today, the, the two women. Um, it was incredible, all down to good characters, right? Keeping up appearances. This used to be re-shown at about half one, didn't it, on BBC One up until about, you know, Tuesday. Keeping up appearances. That was quite funny, wasn't it? I thought that was all right. Let's be with comedian Luke Stephen. Luke, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Ian. How you doing? All right. What's gone, what's gone wrong with, with the world of comedy here? I mean, I've just literally mentioned some of our most classic sitcoms that apparently need a warning. It's... I mean, it's very strange. I can only I can only assume Britbox have made a mistake and they don't really know what these shows are. Yeah. Like the Heidi High one, I watched a load of clips a day, trying my hardest to find something offensive in this show, and there is nothing. It's such a broad comedy with a yeah. laughter track. With really, it's a really well crafted sitcom. It was Heidi a beautiful High. sitcom, wasn't it? It's so well thought out. You know, you've got a Mr. Partridge who is a musical cult star reduced to doing Punch and Judy shows for children he hates. That is a funny dynamic. Correct. That's hilarious. You've yeah. got rather trained actresses with a love affair for the owner. She's trying to get with him. All these people hate doing what they're doing. You've got a maid who aspires to be this yellow coat. It's a perfect situation yeah. comedy. It ran for, I think, seven years in the 80s. Yeah, that sounds about right. So I mean, I, broad, I, laughter track, it's hilarious. There's no one... I don't know... I, I don't know who's offended by that show. And also, I, I mean, my reading of... I mean, you could say, you know, 40 Towers or One Foot in the Grave were more... You know, I mentioned uh, The Good Life, which didn't appeal to me as a kid. Uh, no. But the... Uh, Heidi High was a family show, right? I mean, it was it was aimed at anybody could watch it. They showed it on Sunday, Sunday evenings. Correct, yeah. On God's Day. There was nothing <laughs> offensive on that day in the 80s. It no. Was a big prime time viewing. I think they re-showed it again in 2015. It's just, if you are putting a trigger warning on this, you will need to put trigger warnings on Miranda in 40 years' time. Yeah, it's, for it's maybe very tough. different reasons, but that's another thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, I've watched that show a few times. It makes me laugh. I can't help it. It's silly. It's funny. Like, laughter's an involuntary reaction. It does make me laugh, that show. I kind of, like... I know it should, I should be liking things that are edgy, but that, that programme just makes me laugh. I can't and and there's nothing wrong with that, is it? I mean, I think people who are serious about liking comedy will will invariably yeah. enjoy a kind of broad buffet of, of, of choices. You know, I can watch, you know, I don't know, you know, stuff that's written by Chris Morris and, and, and think it's the most yes. fabulously, you know, intellectually well thought out, beautifully constructed comedy. But equally, I'm happy to sit and watch Only Fools and Horses, which is still, you know, one of the best ever written sitcoms yeah. along with things like Heidi High yeah well that that's the thing we can't all like everything but it's it, it's it's again I just think comedy again is treated to the strangest standard 
ever. A, yeah. a trigger warning on comedies, I just find it really bizarre. There's no, you don't have trigger warnings on dramas that have that tackles those really serious, hard issues and subjects yeah. and, and things like this. But there's a film that Idris Elba done in 2015. I don't know if you've seen it, Beasts of No Nation. Yes. Really, really hard cutting film. Like quite uncomfortable to watch, but there's no trigger warnings on that. And that is a hard watch, but it's yeah. brilliant. But a comedy show, trigger warnings, you might understand what it says. We don't think you're as smart as we are, and you yeah. can't understand the irony and the, the lines in this comedy. And what, so what's stru- really yeah, what, what's funny about it uh, as, as well, Luke, is that, you know, this is BritBox, so people have already paid a subscription yeah. for this, and one assumes that part of the thinking might be that you want to re-watch a load of old sitcoms, like yeah. 40 Towers, Hello, Hello, Heidi High. Exactly. That so they they know what they're getting when that when they're going for this. I mean, I heard you say as well is that with the lower low, it could be like French people doing. I know, God forbid, someone playing someone who they're not in acting. Yeah, people as an actor, what there. a strange, yeah, what a strange know, thing. Yes, and I think maybe a fault with towers because obviously Manuel wasn't from Barcelona, so maybe that's a slight. Oh, it could be the Manuel thing, and then there's the German one, isn't that? You know, that's that, yeah. that obviously upset a lot of people, but then. You know, I, I, I don't know. I but mean, it's all born out of, of Basil Fort's total ineptitude to run a hotel. Like, he is the butt of every single joke. Manuel yeah. is not the butt of the joke. Manuel is not the idiot in that. It's yeah. it's his frustration with Manuel that he can't yeah, understand. Yeah. Not, we're not laughing at Manuel for being, oh, ridiculous, you know, Spaniard not knowing what's going on. It's Basil Fawlty who Correct. is the frustrated guy. Yeah. He's the guy who is in the wrong. Clearly and there's, and there's, not a, there's not a bad episode of it, is there? I think, didn't they only make about 14 of them or something? I think they did 12. And it was a four-year gap, I think, between two series. Wow. Which is just... But it's so well crafted. It's so well written. It's one yeah. of the, you know, you know, it's John Cleese. John Cleese has written some of the most amazing comedies yeah, yeah. ever. If, if you Absolutely. go back and watch A Fish Called Wonder, yep. I mean, that film is, is so so underrated. A Fish Called Wonder. Yeah, yeah I've forgotten all about yeah. that. It's a yeah. great movie. Uh, yeah. Back in the uh, in the day when I, well when I left school, I got a, a holiday job on a, a summer job on a holiday camp, and uh, this was sort of sort of just post the Heidi High era, but. Sue Pollard was booked to come to the holiday camp every week to make a kind of, as a personal appearance. It's only now, as a fully fledged adult, I realise that they were probably paying her about a hundred grand to tour all the holiday camps and do this kind of one hour appearance and sign autographs. And I honestly, I cannot overstate how famous these people were yeah. from that era. I mean, the, 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 obviously, you've got a captured captive audience on a holiday camp but she would show up it's about i think she used to come at like 10 o'clock on a friday morning and there'd be like two thousand people queued up to see and have their photograph taken with sue pollard and that's amazing it's just they were massive stars weren't they yeah they were huge stars they were huge stars well everyone was watching them if you're on a show that's running for seven years in like the 80s throughout that decade sure. I mean, only, was channel when did channel four come in that later in the 80s didn't yeah i, I guess, guess so yeah you only really had three channels. So if you were on TV on a popular sitcom, you were massive, massive yeah, famous. Everybody absolutely. knew who you were. But I kind of like the fact of it being on Brickbox and Sue Pollard still getting syndicate money from it. She's still living off this show. I mean, that, that'd be amazing. Yeah. I, I hope she did the, the right game. You know, there was no what they call a buyout, as you know, and she was, you know, she's still able to get the repeats on that because uh, I'm sure around... I think John Inman did quite well out of um, Are You Being Served, didn't he? Which, yeah, which went, yeah. went well, like great guns in America for some reason. I mean, it's amazing, but that's the, we, we, I mean, I think in the UK we do comedy the best. We write some of the most amazing comedies that stand the test of time. Yeah. I mean, Porridge as well is another one. If you look back at the oh, 90s. Porridge is absolutely so, stunning. It's, it's still so, so strong today. Yeah. And that's like, I mean, that's 50 years ago now. That's like, madness. We continue to produce the best. And the yeah. idea we now don't think British audiences can handle jokes anymore yeah. so we need to warn them i mean people in their daily lives will go through more dangerous and telling times than an episode of heidi high i think you can if you can exist and live life you yeah. can watch an episode of that and not be triggered I totally luke thank you as ever luke stephen comedian with us here he's absolutely spot on on that last point i'd go further i think a heidi high should be shown in assembly at school before you start your daily lesson to put a bit of a smile on your face an episode of I don't know, LOLO wouldn't go amiss either. And of course, they were written 
by the guys behind Dad's Army. And although Dad's Army isn't really one of... I, for some reason, I never bought into that. I know it's, it's sacrilege to say that you're not a big Dad's Army fan. Something about the situation was never appealing to me, not the writing or the acting or anything like that. It just the, the whole arm. A bit like Vickers. You know, Vicar of Dibley never did it. The other one, not Father Ted, although that was, you know, slightly in another league in terms of how it was written. But... You know, this is well-written stuff. This is beautifully crafted stuff. And it's very, very funny. And the idea that we live in a world where you've got to put a trigger warning on Heidi flipping high is what we've arrived in the topsy-turvy world of absolute nonsense. Good Lord. <laughs>